and welcome to this video net demonstration of my variant for Sylvian. My name is Bruce Danner and I want to take you through just a few minutes of the opening of scenario number two. This is because uh, in the campaign, in the narrative of the campaign, scenario number one is largely played out as in the original game. Things begin to change mechanically in scenario number two, and we build upon those variants in scenario number three, but they're largely the same. So introducing scenario two and playing a few turns seems to be the right way uh, to introduce you to the basic mechanics. Okay, so let's get started. The, what we you may notice from Sylvian fans, we're on the wrong side of the battlefield, actually. So what's happening? We are, I will, I'll leave you to have a look at the, um, the variant rules for the story elements. There's a bunch of story elements, and you're welcome to have a look at those. It explains sort of the context for why we're, we're playing this way. But in a nutshell, we are going behind enemy lines. If you examine, if you think about this space as the original battlefield, we're going into enemy territory. We are rescuing the evergreen, a tree that at this point you feel has some sort of powers that could help you in the larger fight of the campaign, but at this point you're not sure. So how do we set this thing, this up? Before you have set up your edge card's desolated side here, you want to draw a random edge card, note the number. And that number will be the row upon which you place the evergreen. One, two, three, or four. So I, um, in before this started, I, I had a two. I placed it on row two. You put it on the furthest column to the right. So that's your first setup condition. You've set up your edge cards, desolated side on the right. There are ways to change these to bloom through the stag card. Uh, and as the play, as we play, and if we come into a stag card, I'll tell you how that works. For now, let's get started with the, continue with the setup. The setup requires us to draw from each Ravage deck until we spot an elemental. Aha. Uh -huh. So so we are laying out an elemental on each of the rows of this of this battlefield. And here we go. And here we go. So the Evergreen is not defeatable by the Ravage. Elementals cannot defeat the Evergreen. So it can help you in the later on in the campaign, but the elementals are surrounding it, protecting it, and aware of your interest. Alright, so we'll set up our decks, get them back in line. And there we go. We have our eight set up cards. Just as in the original game, you may use a hedgehog to eliminate a card. I play with a difficulty, a different difficulty variant. Uh, there's a number of difficulty variants to make this game more difficult. Uh, normally, 
uh, the rules say that you can prevent this card from entering uh, uh, a ravage card but in my uh, difficulty high difficulty variant all you do with an edge card is remove a ravage pawn so what we will do with this hedgehog is we will we will remove the ravage pawn from it so it's a normal card but to amp up the difficulty and really get you a sense of how the um, gameplay works will further we will further amp up the difficulty so what we'll do is we will blaze all of these elementals yeah right we've got three fours coming out on the board and one three no ravage but this is going to be a pretty difficult start So this will be able to demonstrate, which is really one of the true, really the only tricky element of the game, which is managing the uh, movement AI of the Ravage. All right, now we have our startup. Oh, I'll take this off. At least we can't be blazed. So we will, that's already happened. We'll shuffle these decks. And we'll get started. Uh, this will be our discard pile. And we'll draw three cards. So we're loosely trying to organize these by type of card. All right, got some good weapons here, and we're going to need them because uh, we have some we have some uh, pretty strong opposition. The thing we have to manage is that the from here on out, all of the ravage is going to be entering in from the left side. These are uh, the staging ground for the protection of the evergreen. So in the early game, you have to manage these elementals while these elementals are entering in from uh, the left side. All Sylvan cards also enter into the left side, so we're entering the battlefield from the left. So that does allow you in this game to uh, land on a space occupied by another card that's inevitable that the elemental colors will land on spaces occupied by a sylvan and vice versa when that happens standard combat rules apply we've got a lot of got a lot of stuff to deal with first of all let's let's knock out a few enemies we have two elephants out on our play area. We're not we're not yet ready to to put out a uh, tree card. Our objective, since I haven't gotten to it, only tree cards can guide the uh, the evergreen to safety. So your objective is to land an, a, green, a, a tree card onto the battlefield, move it one space orthogonally each turn, and when it occupies the space of the evergreen, it may occupy that same space. And again, once they're in the same space, one space each turn, it may move orthogonally left, right, up, or down in order to bring the evergreen off the battlefield. That's your objective. Take the evergreen, meet up with it, take it 
off the battlefield. So at a minimum, you're talking about it'll take eight turns. But this is obviously going to take more than eight turns to manage. So, so I'm not going to use any tree cards at the moment since we have so many enemies that can damage them. So I think what we'll do is eliminate those. We will get out a... Well, let's take a look. We'll play the squirrel. We won't assume anything just yet. Hasty here. Right. Still getting used to my mouse controller. And so we play the squirrel, get a sense of you now stone rain card, because we have a, a stone rain card operates the same way. It destroys the first sylvan card in its path. If there are no sylvan cards, it would normally fl flip a bloom side to its edge side. If if you haven't moved and a desolated side over to its bloom side yet in the game, it will you'll be obligated to discard a random card from your collection. Well, I'm not certain not certain that we need to worry about not certain that we need to worry about that dove to remove any obstacles the simon card is uh, annoying so i think what we will we are allowed to reverse the order here so we will do this. And I think we will demobilize uh, next turn before we desiccate. And I think we'll leave it at that. And we'll see where it goes. And we're going to take a, take a few hits here. Alright, we'll play a fish card, which will get our, our four strength fountain card out onto, out onto the area of play. All cards are assumed to be moving one space in coming into the battlefield. That's how they move in. Any uh, Sylvan card that you have out in the battlefield already may move one space orthogonally, up or down, left or right. And we've played that. We only have one left. It's not in danger of being gone. Well, let's have a look. We'll just uh, operate. That'll be our turn for this.
for this phase. And we'll start with the ravage term. All right, we have three demobilization cards. Put these over, shuffle. Gonna lose some pretty good cards here. Yep, yeah, gonna lose some real good cards. And we'll leave those demobilized cards over here. Flip this over to, apply, to make sure that that is our discard pile. And we have movement. So we have played the support cards. A entering elemental can only move along its row into the battlefield. If it moves onto a Sylvan card, standard combat rules apply. And therefore, this card is defeated. Sylvan cards, uh, elemental cards. Now, this is a good example of the use of the AI. As you look in the AI section, you'll notice that there are six different priorities, movement priorities. But the most important movement priority is this one. This is the one you're going to use 90% of the time. 80% or 90%. A, a elemental card will move toward the nearest enemy that it can defeat. It doesn't matter if it will also be destroyed. So this 4 can defeat a 4, so we're just going to move one space as quickly, as directly to that opponent as it can. If another, say another, if another Sylvan card emerges here, that would be closer, it would move toward that one. Now, this three strength, this three strength elemental cannot defeat this opponent. So it we would say that if you looked if you looked at the movement priorities that this would be a protective uh, motive uh, priority number four which states that an elemental that cannot destroy an opponent on the battlefield will move toward the evergreen to surround it. It is already along the evergreen. If it moves toward uh, a higher strength elemental, that would be violating its movement principles. So there we go. That's all done. Let's draw three cards. Let's see here. And another squirrel. All right, and a stag card. All right, very nice. All right, stag card, how do they work, given that our objective is not to bloom this entire forest back? Our objective is not to save this desiccated forest. If you played a stag card, you would be allowed to move two edge cards to their bloom side. Now, this is important in scenario number three. In the third scenario of the game, while you are here in, en uh, in enemy lines or behind enemy lines, you are uh, the, your forest is still under attack. So you're going to start with as many edge cards flipped, uh, half the amount of edge cards as the turns that took you to win scenario number two. So if it took you all 20 turns to get the evergreen off the battlefield, you would start with 10 edge cards flipped over. So when you play a stag here, these two cards would mitigate that 
and they, therefore you'd only have eight you'd only have start with eight cards flipped over so essentially um, a stag card only mitigates your your issue in the third scenario all right we have a sea loan card coming up and we have a stone rain card coming up and we have to we're going to have to manage one at least one of these we only have a and a stone rain uh, without any opponent to destroy along this row is essentially going to function as a desiccation card so we're going to lose a card we might choose to lay out a a card here because we know we can draw another one and then use the hedgehog to mitigate let's see we might prefer to slow down the process of the Simon card Whatever choices we have aren't great, so we may have to lose. You know, uh, when you take out these elementals along this row, you're just going to have to lose some of your. You're going to have to lose some of your forces because you're being you're being fought on two fronts essentially. Until you have managed to take out these cards that support the the evergreen. You're managing the war on two fronts. So we're going to lose a card, lose a card, and gain an extra space of turn. That would put, that would bring the, this opponent right on our tail. And we will be pretty much decimated of opportunities to so I think what we'll do we'll just gonna we're just gonna take the hit we're gonna take all the hits from the lost cards and just play our cards so we will get a we will lay down a, a Sylvan card. And we will play another squirrel. And get another look see into what's coming ahead of us. So for now, we'll lay this defender deck over here. We'll bring this over there, these incoming cards. And we'll have a look at what's coming up. It's a warm strength. Temporal Tornado. Hmm. Be nice to have a geyser at this point. We're not going to get it. And a Blaze card. Let's 
it's good to have the squirrels so you can really manage what's coming in front of you. <sighs> Looking a little grim. So we're going to slog it through for a little while. We'll just get one more turn from the elementals taken care of. Hopefully get one of ours attacked. And let's just play this. We'll play this and this first for the elemental turn. And those will take cards from our hand. We don't have any cards in our hand, so that's okay. This enters in the space occupied by the Sylvan card. Standard combat rules apply. It is defeated. And the Simon card allows for one space of a move. And now you're free. You're free to move these elementals in whatever direction you like. What this allows us to do, what, the, what makes this superior, is that this allows, this blocking allows the three strength elemental to begin attack, uh, approaching uh, an enemy it can defeat without endangering itself, moving toward the Sullen card. All right, I think we'll leave it there. Uh, for those of you who want to go further and uh, continue with the end of the scenario and keep looking at some of the AI rules, some of the how the game plays forward, how it, how um, you manage the process of moving your tree card over to the evergreen, moving it back, stick around. There'll be another video. But for now, we'll just uh, we'll finish it up, and uh, I hope that this has given you enough, wet your appetite enough to want to play it and give it a try. Thanks, everybody.